I've talked to a lot of different people about adaptive designs, and one of the issues that always comes up is how do they get into it? Although they may save you money or time or gain some extra information, adaptive designs generally require more thought and effort than traditional designs. So you want to make sure that doing the study this way is worth it. So here's some considerations to think about when you're getting into adaptive designs. How long after you start your intervention can you measure your outcome? The defining aspect of any adaptive study is the ability to enroll some subjects, look at their responses, and then make changes to the study. If you're doing an adaptive randomization, for example, this is inherent since you observe the results of your randomization right after you randomize the subject. If you're basing the adaptation on the results of the treatment, however, the time to response can be more complicated. This is the problem with doing adaptive designs in cancer therapies. It takes months, if not years, to assess whether the subjects go into remission. Now, other clinical areas are much more amenable to this. Take seasonal allergic rhinitis, for example. The outcomes there are often assessed within two weeks of dosing. The next question to consider is how quickly will you enroll subjects? The second half of this ability to make the change to your study is that there still has to be time left in the study to make changes after you look at the results. The key is actually the relationship between the length of the time to assessment and the enrollment rate. Take our seasonal allergic rhinitis example. It turns out that this was actually not conducive to an adaptive study because while they assess within two weeks, all 800 subjects are going to be enrolled in a month. So there's no time to change anything about the study even if you could look at the results. Another question is, what will I gain from doing an adaptive design? Although these designs are touted as saving you time and money, generally what you gain is simply more bang for your buck. The adaptive randomizations ensure better balance on key confounders. Bayesian dose escalation designs give you more information than classical 3 plus 3 designs. Pruning designs, they let you look at a broader ranges of doses for the same number of subjects exposed. So what you gain will depend on what your needs are. So you may need to bring in some expertise just for an overall assessment. Think of it as an um, expert opinion on what colors or styles look good for you.